from American Public Media. I hear that old piano from down the avenue. I smell the roses. I look around for you. Oh, my sweet, sweet, sweet summer. Coming through that door. It's Saturday and the band is playing. Honey, could we ask for more? Coming to you live from the Great Lawn in front of Old Main on the campus of McAllister College in St. Paul. Well, look who's coming through that door. I think we met somewhere before. Hello, love. I recognize these people. Hello, love. The old powder milk biscuit band over here, Mr. Bobby Douglas, Adam Granger, Mary Duchesne, Pop Wagner back here on the guitar. Oh, hello, love. And on the streets of my little town, the moonlight comes streaming down. The dead wait in their graves for the Lord, their souls to save in this world of mine in the green summer time. Long distance lover, then they turn like a cover and dance the red over till the last. you do a radio show for 40 years, it does tend to add years to your life, and you're going to get older. There's just no, no, no way around it. It's going to, it's going to take, up, take up time, and you're going to become an old person, which I, which I have now become. You remind yourself of old people you used to know back 40 years ago. I don't read celebrity magazines because I don't know any of the celebrities. Did you hear on the news about that man who's been doing the same radio show for 40 years? <laughs> Honey, gosh, 40 years, can you believe that? And you quit your novel after three. Yeah, and you ever hear that show, huh? Mom, well, the, the key word there is same, well, okay? I mean, he's been doing the same show over and over and over. I mean, it's like somebody well, winning the world record for writing your name the most times on a blackboard. I mean, that's not how I care to spend my life, okay? Well, honey, at least he stuck with something. Now, stuck honey. is the word, isn't it? I mean, but, you know, as in unable to move. Oh, I mean, honey, now he's a good guy. What, this, the, the guy who's been married five, six times, huh? Is well, who we're talking honey, about? at least he kept trying, well, right? Am I right now, huh? <laughs>
Today's episode of Ruth Harrison, Reference Librarian, will not be heard so that we can bring you this 40th anniversary. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What did you say? I said that you won't be heard so that we can do this special broadcast. But I will too be heard. Uh, you are not going to come in here and tell me that I will not be heard. Do you understand? Well, don't just stand there. Answer me. Yes. Uh, you want me to throw him out the door, Miss Harrison? Uh, no, no, Brent. I want you to finish shelving. No, I'm, I'm not Brent. I'm Kent. Uh, uh, finish shelving, Kent. Oh, okay. Thank you. And Mr. Bill Hinckley loved this tune the last couple of years of his life. What's the tune? It's a Neil Gow composition called Neil Gow's Lamentation for James Murray of Abercarney. And you wrote some new words for We it. wrote some lyrics and uh, in, as, a, as a salute to Bill. And now the title is Pop Wagner's and Adam Granger's Lamentation for William Hinckley of Minneapolis set to Neil Gow's Lamentation for James Murray of Abercarney. I'm not sure we got time to play the tune now, Adam. I think we're done. We sing this song for our old friend. William Hinckley was his name. He was blue of eye and scraggly of beard. And oh, so very stout was he of frame. The 40th anniversary of the world's largest pile of burlap bags in Lake Wobegon, 1974. The Dick Myers, er Earl and Ruby Dick Meyer, uh, own this thing. It's out beside their barn, um, just north of town. It is now 97 feet high, and it is 122 feet wide, and almost 300 feet long, and it is the largest pile of burlap bags in, in America. It takes a lot of work to keep this up, you know. You've got to keep adding things to it. It's not the greatest accomplishment in the world to accomplish something just by accumulation. And every week or so, you go out and toss more burlap bags up there, and you shore up the sides. It's not anything necessarily a person would want to base their life on. But there it is. There it is. Who knows what to make of it? We don't even try to understand it. Lois Binder, my very first show. What do you remember from that first show? How many people were there? Well, you said 12, and I believe you. <laughs> Is that what you remembered before you heard that I said? I remember, I remember there were very few, but I'm so glad to see so many people here today. You've done well. Well, you've done very well yourself. <laughs> Hey, 
hang on to your old friends, including the one you're married to, because there will come a time when there is no good reason to like you except out of long-standing habit. All right? Yeah. And that day, bucko, is coming sooner than you think. Uh -huh. The Evelyn Lundberg Counseling Agency, the ELCA. If your parents have passed on and you wonder what they might say, just call the ELCA. close to mine Want to taste your kisses so divine I don't want to be your puppet on a string I just want to be the man of your dreams They took one look at each other Why, you and they socked each other in the jaw <laughs> and knocked each other out <laughs> and I wrested the gun out of Rico's hand Hey, hey. And it went off, oh. and it hit the chandelier, which dropped and knocked both of them out. <laughs> and there I was with four perps out cold on the floor. There's a lot of crime fighting in just five minutes, and I saved McAllister from major embarrassment, in exchange for which I wouldn't mind having something named for me, huh? Maybe a noir stairway or a noir alley. How about a noir night here? Like a dark night in a city that knows how to keep its secrets. I want you to give a hand to the man who holds this whole show together. He's the hardest working man, Mr. Chris Gorski. Chris Gorski, our music director for 20 years.